Hi, Fred Beto from Beto's Blog. I'm so excited to be here and helping spread the word about this incredible documentary in the process. Pocaro, a band of brothers at Indiegogo.com. Steve Duddy and his brother Chris Duddy are making this documentary of the legendary Icon Brothers, Steve, Mike, and Jeffrey Pocaro. And what's incredible is that it's also about their legendary father, the most elegant drummer in the music industry, Joe Pocaro. We need for the whole drumming community and the music community and also Toto's fan and friends to all come together and make this thing a reality. Please visit their campaign at Pocaro, at Band of Brothers, Indiegogo.com. Without any further waste of your time, I'd like to turn you on now to the blog, Cable with Steve Duddy and Chris Duddy talking about this incredible documentary. Please check it out and let's bring it home. This is Cable from Beto's blog and on the line tonight, I have the privilege and pleasure of talking to Christopher and Stephen Duddy who are in California tonight and they join us on the show. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank Thank you. Great to be here. Appreciate your time. We are going to talk about a documentary called Picaro, A Band of Brothers. Steve, can you tell our listeners what is the theme and what is this documentary about? Obviously, it's about the Picaro family and brothers, but get a little bit more into detail about that. Okay. Well, I've been in the Picaro family for almost 35 years now, and, uh, you know, they're just an amazing family. Uh, they're probably the first family of music is how I describe them. Um, they, starting with Joe Picaro, started his career back in Hartford, Connecticut, um, got married, raised four kids, and at the age of 36, decided to take the plunge and take the risk of moving out to California to fulfill his dreams of becoming a studio musician here out in, in uh, the land of studio work in Hollywood here. And, uh, you know, took a big risk, packed his family up, um, young kids, and made it out here at 36 and, and really made it out here. I mean, he had an amazing career and raised three boys that ended up having uh, as big, if not bigger, careers than he did. And so the story is of, you know, my wonderful in-laws that, uh, like I said, starting with Joe and Aileen, bringing their kids out here and uh, helping them flourish. And not only helping them, but, you know, just many, many musicians that came through their house. Joe had a studio. He built a, he, he took his garage and converted it into a studio for, for himself to start to, to be able to practice uh, in, the, in between some of his sessions. And then, you know, his kids naturally gravitated towards it when they started picking up instruments. And, you know, then just the amount of talent that came through that garage, uh, so many people that were junior high and high school, they ended up becoming, you know, professional musicians. And, you know, then eventually his boys not only had great studio careers, but all, uh, all at one time in the band, band Toto. And, uh, you know, if anybody knows Toto out there, they know they won multiple Grammys and sold multiple millions of records. So I just want to tell that story. Chris? Obviously, your experience is really a little bit overwhelming for everything you've done, and I know you are either finishing or have wrapped up a documentary, which we talk about, um, another documentary about another famous musician. Tell us about what is involved in doing a documentary about a family like this with multiple musicians with such a story career. Tell us about how do you go about filming that, and what do you try and really accomplish in terms of the mechanics? Yeah, I mean, you know, documentaries uh, tend to take a life of, of their own. You know, you, you sort of have an idea about, you know, we're making a, this documentary about, you know, a family, a family of musicians, but it could take on a whole, you know, there's a very broad spectrum here of what, what we're dealing with, um, not only the family aspect, but, and, and, and you know, three brothers being in a famous uh, rock band and, but, uh, you know, the musicianship uh, that comes with that. So, you know, the approach is to, 
the nuts and bolts of it is just, you know, Steve and I have been talking a lot about what, what the movie should be about and what, what we should sort of go after on, on a, you know, as a, as a whole here. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll find other backstories as, as we're going. I mean, I found, I'm, I'm just finishing a documentary about um, Duff McKagan, who was one of the original founders of Guns N' Roses and then went on to Velvet Revolver and a bunch of other bands. And um, uh, it, 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 there was a bunch of stuff, you know, once I started the journey and started to make the movie and interviewing people, you know, I found out a lot more about Duff that wasn't in his book that we were facing the, the documentary on. Um, you know, so... so and the movie kind of t took a life of its own. At a certain point, a documentary really starts telling you how to make the movie and not you sort of telling the movie how you're going to make it. One of the things that sticks out to me the most is, it, uh, or, or really uh, was incredible to me, is when Don Henley did his first solo album after The Eagles, uh, he sought out Jeff to drum on it, and he's a drummer. You know, that, that always kind of, you know... <laughs> That was always pretty incredible to me. Um, that someone like Don Henley would, would search out Jeff to, to drum on his first record. Steve, Steve, let's, uh, let's go back to you for a second. You're working here not only as an executive producer, but you're also, as we would say, a witness. You lived through a lot of this. Isn't that true? Yes, I did. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been... It's an amazing journey for me too. Um, so, so I was, you know, I was bouncing around from college to college, trying to be a, uh, you know, a college quarterback, you know, playing football, and you know, had my own dreams of being, you know, making it in the pros. And so I was bouncing around, and uh, I got a scholarship to BYU. I didn't really fit there, so I, I, I came back home and went to a junior college locally to kind of keep my eligibility and continue to play. And and Jolene, uh, their, uh, Jolene Ewing's daughter, and Steve, Mike, and Jeff's sister uh, happened to take one class in college. Her, her whole college career was one class, and I happened to be in that class. So we, we met there, and, you know, fate just took me on this ride. I mean, I, I you know, came into the family quickly. You know, we, we, we hit it pretty quick, and uh, 1980, I met her in 79 and, and met the family in 80, and they just embraced me right away. They were just such gracious uh, nice people that, that they just took me in right away. Mike, Mike and I became fast friends. Uh, Jeff was, Jeff was busy a lot, but every time I was around him, and, you know, first thing, come into his house, ask me whatever I wanted to, to have and sit down and talk to me. And, uh, you know, and that, you know, when it's heyday, I mean, they were, they were doing sessions. Jeff was doing sessions probably every day at that time. Uh, not only locally, but, you know, flying off to do, uh, two weeks with Elton John or, you know, Flying off for two weeks to do David Gilmore's record, just just you know, just busy as ever, and you know, so I got to I got to have first eyewitness. Uh, they they I was always allowed. I always get called first. You know, I'd always say, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I, oh, we're going to be at the studio. You know, come on down if you want. So I got to just come down and hang with them all the time, the band, uh, you know, individually. So they were just gracious people and humble, and so they were just. For them, they were just working. You know, they, yeah, because they didn't really know, you know, some of the stuff that Jeff worked on. You never know if even the song you work on is going to make the record, and then you don't know if that song, even if it makes the record, is ever going to be heard, and then you don't know if it's ever going to be a hit. So, you know, for, from their perspective, they were just always just working musicians. And, you know, what, what now, looking back 35 years later, 22 years after Jeff's death, is, you know, these, these songs that they played on, the artists they played with, they're, they still hold up. They're still playing on the, the radio every day. And, you know, that, that's what's kind of made this this documentary so meaningful to us right now is because it, it, their careers did, looking back, mean something. Um, you know, so many great hits they played on with so many great artists. And so, you know, I, I hate to use this thing, but I... I kind of been coined on me, which is I was the ultimate fly on the wall, you know, I mean, I got to really witness a lot of great stuff, <laughs> you know, I'm 
sitting at rehearsal, they would always rehearse for two to three weeks before they'd go on the road, and, and you know, they always had a big rehearsal hall wherever they were, and yeah, I'm in there at night, just me and them, you know, sitting on the couch, and I had my free concert every night, you know, it was just, it was just amazing, they were always so gracious to let me be wherever they were, and you know, the only time I ever was asked to, to leave a room or something was when they would start getting going at it, you know, and that was when I was younger, but then as I... You know, as I was around longer and longer, she stuff would break out right in front of me, and they would even turn to me sometimes and ask my opinion about stuff. So, you know, it was just really a great ride. I got to tell you, it's been it's been amazing, and you know, I, I just would like to share that with everybody. Chris, you've worked on some very important projects in your long, lengthy career. You have obviously an idea of what is a good product and what's a great product. In your opinion, I would assume the answer to the question of, is this a story that has to be told, would be yes. Could you explain why this is a story that has to be told? Well, I think it's, uh, I think I, I, you know, I'm drawn to inspirational uh, uh, stories. I always have been, you know, growing up and falling in love with movies at a young age. And, you know, uh, I, I, I just, and, 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 you know, being, close to the fa- the Bacall family, not as close as my brother Steve, but, you know, I was around that too back then and at a very formidable age when we, when we met them, you know, I was like just going into college and just, just kind of finding the camera and I studied photography in college and, but just being around those guys, you know, they, they, they just were really inspirational to me and just seeing that normal everyday guys could be that successful and that, and not only that successful, but that cool. Like they were the coolest guys. Like everybody loved all three of them. I mean, they were just, they just lit up a room when they came in to, you know, and not, not unlike the Jeff McKagan story, which is a really inspirational story, you know, rags to riches kind of story. And, and this is a very similar, uh, 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 you know, lesson in life that you know if you just if you just work hard and and you're cool, you're you're a nice person, you know, good things can happen. And these guys just, you know, they they were the epitome of that, you know. And I always looked up to them. I was like, you know, I was the always the youngest hanging out. I would go hang out with Steve with them. You know, I was kind of always the youngest guy there, so I really looked up to them. And, you know, when I started making my own films, I, I, you know, I'm always looking for projects that make sense to me. And, you know, when my brother Steve came to me and said, hey, you know, now that you've kind of broken the, you know, the mold on, on documentaries, you know, what do you think about making a documentary about the Picaro brothers? And I, you know, I immediately, you know, responded to that because I... Their story is just, it's incredible, you know, and then, and, and at the same time, there's some, you know, there's tragedy involved as well. And, you know, it's just, there, it's compelling. And, 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 you know, the amount of success they've had and how many, how many people in the music business, uh, the musicians, successful musicians that they've touched is, is, is pretty unprecedented. You know, like, I, there's not that many people that have played on that many records. And successful records. And when they were, you know, in their peak, they were playing with every every top band or musician or solo artist in in the business. Great. I just got one last question for both of you. What is it going to be like working with your brother? Well, that I, I'm going to take the lead on that, Steve. I mean, it's interesting. You know, I, I've spent my whole career, you know. In, in one capacity or another uh, making movies and um, you know this is this is kind of the, my, my brother Steve's first uh, first experience with it so it I, you know it's, it's interesting because it's a movie about brothers and, and brothers are going to make the movie and uh, you know it, it's bringing it's, it's, it, it could it could be a real chance and opportunity for Steve and I to, you know, to bond over this and to make a really, you know, uh, memorable and compelling documentary about Brothers, you know. Um, And Brothers has a lot of different meanings, too, by the way. It's not just Blood Brothers. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a a brotherhood of 
you know, a lot of things. So I think that's kind of the essence of the movie, you know? Steve, you got the parting shot. Yeah, yeah no, I, 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 I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I mean, we have not been able to, to you know, we're, we're, we're pretty close family and, you know, we live within, you know, a half hour of each other and we see each other quite a bit because, you know, we've never ever done anything together. You know, we, I've always been in such a different industry than him and, you know, so we've never really worked on anything together. Uh, so I'm really kind of looking forward to it. You know, he's, he's already taught me a lot of what, what needs to be done and how, how to go about it. And you know, he's introduced me to some, some really good people so far in that business. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, uh, you know, everybody's embraced it on this end. You know, Joe Pacal, Steve Pacal, you know, they really are happy that we're, you know, that somebody that is as close to the project as me that now is able to work with somebody that I'm close with and trust and, you know, has made quality films. So, you know, I, I think uh, everybody's really happy that, that uh, you know, somebody that can tell their story that is close to it and also can do it in a professional way. So, you know, that's, it's, it's really... This, you know, the stars just align for this for us, you know. So now we have to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. You know, now, now it's on us to, to, to make it worthy of the, this family because, I mean, now that's the, the next challenge. You know, the next challenge is, okay, we're going to do this. Now we have to honor them with making something of, of you know, real quality. Well, Chris and Steve, I thank you so much for your time here on Beto's blog. And I speak for many of us when I say the real life story was great. And I think that many of us, if not all of us, can't wait to see what product you guys put out and how you tell this magnificent story. Thank you so much for a few minutes tonight. And we wish you the best with the documentary. And we can't wait to see it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.